Uh, the other condition that I see quite regularly uh, in the newborn period yep. are swelling in the groin. So the swelling in the groin could be um, uh, a testis which is mobile, which is completely normal. Or it could be a swelling that comes and goes, um, as in a hernia. This is due to um, a structure which is not close when the child is born. And uh, this, this, the, the, what can happen is that a small piece of bowel can come through the hernial opening and can appear as a swelling outside the groin. And when this happens, it can, it can, it can impinge on the intestine. It can cause a bit of discomfort for the child. So the child can be irritable. Um, so an ch irritable child with swelling that's come and goes uh, is likely to have a hernia. Right. This, all, this can also cause air trapping to happen and the child can have colicky pain. Uh, it's often def described as colic. Uh, yeah. can you, can, can, what's colicky pain? So colicky pain is something that comes and goes. I and see. The, the intestine which is, is, which is, uh, which is trying to push uh, the content of the intestine forward goes as it cramps and uncramps. Right. That's a normal function of the intestine. But if something is obstructing or there's a lot of gas in the intestine, it can cramp against this partial obstruction. And this can cause quite a lot of pain for the child. So a colicky pain is one that comes and goes and child can have intermittent crying. So you know that the child is just intermittent crying, cries for one or two minutes and then stops and then cries for few minutes uh, uh, again after about 10-20 minutes and it stops that is colicky pain and often they, they they can be also very windy babies so they, they pass a lot of latest yeah yeah so if you see a child with a groin swelling with intermittent crying and then when they cries the swelling gets more pronounced it is a hernia once it's a hernia is unlikely to disappear you can massage and make it disappear at that point in time but then it'll reappear again so massaging does help by reducing it but it doesn't make it go away completely so once there's a hernia uh, a surgical procedure is required and to prevent further complications of the hernia understand yeah. and are these hernias related to the intestinal kind of bowel movements and so on are they more common with boys or girls or equally so the hernias more, appear more in boys okay or 95 percent of all hernias appear in boys and five percent in girls this is because of the the way the testes descend the testes descend through this hole through the muscle right into the scrotum and in girls although they don't have testes that's descending the same hole can appear so that's why it's much rarer in girls. So um, in, in boys, 1% uh, it, it, of all boys will have a hernia. So it, this is quite frequent. So it's one of the commonest operations that I do for, for, for newborn as well as for older children. Right. Should treatment be necessary? What does that involve? So for, once you establish that the cause of the groin lump is a hernia, uh, I do the operation by keyhole method, whereby I place a camera into the belly button and two other small cuts in the, on either side of the planks. Uh, the cuts are about three millimeters wide. This is keyhole tiny. surgery or minimally invasive That's surgery? Right, yes, right? keyhole right. or minimally invasive surgery is the same. Yeah. So once uh, we've done that, the, once the camera is in the tummy, we can examine both sides. So if the child presents with a hernia on the right side, which is the commoner side, they can potentially have a hernia developing on the other side, but in about 15% of times. So we can check the other side as well whilst repairing the hernia on the presented side. Right. So, so that avoids the child having a second surgery when a hernia appears on the other side I see. at a later okay. stage. Okay, so yeah. it's like almost preventative in a way. That's right, yeah. yeah. So doing a keyhole surgery allows you to, to do that on the other side uh, without an additional cut. Right. And preventing another anesthesia uh, in the future. In girls, we can also examine the structures, making sure all the uterine structures, the ovaries are all in the right position, right, pos uh, and, and they're both healthy. Okay. Uh, so uh, that allows us to examine as well, as well as check the other side. And in this situation, when they go through keel surgery for hernia, what's the typical recovery time? Like how long does it take for them to be better yes. on, on average? So I use glue on the wound so they can, they can uh, go home same day 
on the same day okay. exactly yeah. right. so the, the operation is done they go on the same day unless the the baby is less than three months of age so for for an older child uh, they can they can go home same day under ch under three months of age they stay in overnight and then they go home next day the the glue will be a waterproof uh, layer so they can shower uh, once they go home and the wound becomes uh, watertight after about uh, three or four days at which time the uh, the glue will fall off oh wow okay so it's a relatively quick exactly, recovery yes, process yes. so right. uh, often i see the child running around after the operation and they they are they are almost back to normal within the next uh, the two or three days with with almost negligible pain fantastic yep that's good news for the parents then yes that's right